Hi, I'm Michael from Kitchen Cider and welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at some kitchen design mistakes. So I've got 10 design mistakes to cover, a mix of some general and technical mistakes that I've seen over the years. Kicking things off with probably the biggest mistake I see, not measuring correctly. It sounds obvious and it should be, but the number of times I've heard we've started our kitchen installation and it doesn't fit. It's probably one of the most common mistakes. So take your time and double check all your measurements and then check them again. If you're building an extension or knocking down walls or replastering any walls, if you're making any alterations as you go along, recheck those measurements because they'll likely be different, especially if you've been working off of architect plans at the start. Get in there and on site as soon as you can and get some real world measurements. Then double check them. Next mistake is rushing the design process. Another common mistake I see is not giving yourself enough time to really work on your project. Have some back and forth to really develop the best kitchen and get what you really want. All too often I'll have people turn up saying, Saying, we've started ripping out our kitchen or the builders are almost finished with the extension and I need a kitchen next week. Then I have to be the one to shatter their dreams and tell them that's simply not possible. They either have to wait and go through the whole process properly with me or go somewhere that does off the shelf cabinets but that's not really what they're after. So give yourself plenty of time to not only work on the design and get that absolutely right but also some time for the manufacturing process of the cabinets as well. I usually say three to six months is a good amount of time from when you first meet with a kitchen designer to when you can look at having your kitchen installed. The next mistake is forgetting functionality. So this is when there just isn't any consideration taken for how you'll actually work and function in your kitchen. Oftentimes this occurs because you've rushed the design process. It's a bit like, okay, I've got all my appliances in the kitchen, they can go somewhere there, I'll fill in the rest with cabinets, hey presto, kitchen done. But functionality and a functional kitchen is key when it comes to kitchen design. Stop and consider things like your workflow. You could look at the work triangle or kitchen zones to help you with this. Think about your cabinet types, what's most functional for you and where are you placing these particular types of cabinets. How can you make your kitchen as functional as possible for you? The next mistake is trying to cram too much in. Most often this is when someone is adamant that they want a kitchen island in their space but they really don't have room to fit one in but they'll go ahead and put it into the detriment of the kitchen layout and the user experience and functionality. Doing this means that usually you won't have wide enough walkway spaces around your kitchen so you're going to end up bumping into people as you maneuver around. Cupboard doors might clash into one another when you open them or you might not be able to stand in front of a drawer pack and open it fully because there just isn't enough space which all leads to a bad user experience and one that will drive you crazy or maybe you're focused on storage a little bit too much and you've got wall cabinets absolutely everywhere right up to the edge of the window and doorways all the way up to the ceiling creating this heavy and claustrophobic feeling in your kitchen so consider the space within your space give yourself enough room to comfortably be able to maneuver around your kitchen and really think about how much storage you actually need could you give your design a little bit more breathing space next kitchen kitchen design mistake is not accounting for any fillers or corner posts. More of a technical design mistake here. Walls are never dead straight or at a perfect 90 degree angle. So you need to allow for fillers or scribing panels to not only fill the gap, but push those cabinets off the wall a little bit so any doors don't crunch against the wall or any drawers don't hit the wall as you open them. Probably the worst culprit and one I've seen come up the most is not allowing enough space around an American fridge freezer. All too often with kitchen designs, I'll see people put them right at the end of a run up against a wall or too close to a corner and return run of cabinets. So when you open the door, the fridge handle either hits the wall or hits the return run of cabinets. And you can't open the door to 90 degrees or more than 90 degrees which then means you can't pull out your veg drawers inside. It's just a nightmare. And the same kind of thing applies with the corner post. If you're having a blind corner cabinet and you forget to allow for a corner post, those doors and drawers are likely to clash and hit one another. The classic scenario here is if you've got a drawer near the corner and you pull it out, 
it hits the door handle of the cabinet adjacent to it and you can't pull it out fully. So pay attention to the placement of these things and pay special attention to fillers and corner posts. Next up we've got ignoring your lighting. I've just done a whole video about kitchen lighting so I'll leave a link to that but basically this is just not thinking about the lighting in your kitchen. Not giving any thought to your ambient or task lighting and just throwing up a light fixture in the middle of your ceiling and thinking that's good enough. Lighting and thoughtful effective lighting is so important for a functional kitchen. So think about and plan your lighting in early as soon as you've got your kitchen layout locked in. That way all the wiring can get put in place early and be ready. You don't have to go chopping up walls or surface mounting things after the fact when you realize and it's too late. So think about lighting and plan it all in. It's all part of kitchen design. Next mistake is overlooking the architecture. Now a lot of the time you'll be designing a kitchen in the space that you have and you'll work within those confines as best that you can. However, if you're having an extension or it's a new build, or even if you just have the capabilities to change something within the structure as part of your kitchen renovation, it definitely pays to stop and have a little think about it. Could you make your window bigger? Or could you move a doorway or knock a wall down to give you a better layout option for your kitchen? Sometimes these more architectural elements are overlooked because we're so focused on the cabinetry and the look of the kitchen. So again, give your yourself some time earlier on and look at the room as a whole. Are there any changes to the structure that could positively impact the final design of your kitchen? Next mistake is not having enough power. I've said it before on this channel, if you're asking yourself, should I put another power point in? Then yes, you should definitely add another one in. Whether that's another socket on the wall along your main run of cabinets or inside at the back of a larder, creating a charging drawer or adding some power onto your island. Make sure you have enough power points across your kitchen to create different functional zones. We don't want trailing cables or multi-gang plugs everywhere. Better to have that extra socket than not enough. The next mistake is not planning a place for your bins. I know they're not very glamorous and certainly not on any kitchen trend list but you do need them so don't make them an afterthought think about where they will be as part of your kitchen design it could be integrated into a cabinet near your sink which is usually my go-to spot or they could be freestanding tucked away a little in an intentional and sensible location just don't forget your bins and lastly forgetting that it's your kitchen it may sound a bit cheesy but remember this is your kitchen you need to love it and it needs to to work for you. If it's a quick kitchen renovation because you're flipping the house, sure, go with something safe. But if you plan to live there for any decent amount of time, make sure that it's the kitchen that you want. Don't worry if somebody's going to like the kitchen years down the line when you do decide to sell the house. It's usually the first thing people will rip out and change anyway. And don't worry if you're not absolutely in love with the latest trend when you're doing your kitchen. Trends come and go. You're the one that's living and working in this kitchen. It's your money. It's your your kitchen and you know how you work best, get the kitchen that's right for you. Kitchens are probably the most complicated room in the house. There's lots of moving parts to consider. And while no project ever goes 100% perfectly, if you can avoid some of these mistakes, you'll be well on your way. So have you got any other kitchen design mistakes you'd like to share? Leave a comment below. You might just help someone out. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.